Boy, I hope you're here to party because I am, and by party, I mean the Federalist versus Democrat Republican parties. And uh, boy, we're here for, I'm not sure we're here for a long time, but we are going to be here for a good time. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever or whenever you are. Welcome to Room 1206. Mr. Swanson here, Bacon County High School, Alma, Georgia. If you're watching this video, it's probably because I'm not in class today, and this is going to be an audio guide for our topic of the day, America's First Political Parties. If you have found yourself on the internet, bored and lonely at night, and on this video, well, I pity what else you have to do in your life, but if you'll stay here for a few minutes, I'll teach you about America's First Political Parties as well. My students, in your work packet, you have a one-page of notes today, this Venn diagram, comparing the two and one supporting article to go with it as well. You can see I have highlighted mine uh, and, uh, and these slides posted as a PDF as always. I call this an audio guide, meaning that you could listen to this while your other tab has the PDF up and you can scroll along. Or of course you can watch this video. Resolution of the slides is not great on the video, but you could click back and forth uh, as well. So audio guide, what I have to say is the most important and you have the PDF posted so you can have a better look at all of the pictures. Uh, I think we know what to expect at this point. I've been gone for a couple days. You've been great for the substitute and I appreciate that. I will send you some pictures of my vacation to the Republic of Georgia. And I don't mean vacation. Of course, I mean, I'm on my Army National Guard annual training. Uh, I miss you in class. I said this a couple days ago, I'll say it again. What we miss through this digital lesson is the ability to talk to each other. I love the questions you have. I love answering them on topic or not. Sometimes we go down great rabbit holes and uh, flush out some information. You guys wrestle with the information. I love seeing your faces all scrunched up, not quite buying what I'm selling. And that means I need to say it in another way to make sure you understand. So, so I'm missing the emotions of you being in the room, of us being in the room together, but still I can give you this audio guide and post several additional resources. This is gonna be a class where my audio guide is significantly shorter than the past two days. And really, I'm going to turn it over to you to uh, do some self-study, some self-learning along the way. A great teacher once told me that every now and then there's a class, you get a class, doesn't have to be an honors class. You get a class where you can just throw a book into the middle of the room and they'll teach themselves. And I hope that you'll be that class, right? I'm throwing some information into the middle of the room. I'm not there, but you can still teach yourself and quite frankly, self-guided uh, reflection and study is way better than me just I, I hope I never just open your brain and start pouring information in there that's not what we're going for I want you to wrestle with the information but some days that's probably what lecture feels like open up the brain receive the information not the case with these audio guides you get to wrestle with the information for yourself so let's party the Federalist Party versus the Democratic Republican Party onward and upward as a review let's review where we have come from remember Washington's cabinet so this unit, this unit's called 2A, and it's called the Early Republic. And we're pretty deliberately walking through the first five presidents. We will get ourselves to a point of the Civil War before we'll pause for the unit exam. So in reflecting on and reviewing the Early Republic, we got to remember some of these precedents. And I hope as soon as I say precedent, you think about first, a precedent is not a president. A precedent is an action that's been taken, repeated by future presidents. So Washington... Everything he did was first. Everything he did was a precedent. But of course, other presidents have also set precedents along the way. Big one for Washington was his cabinet. And uh, we talked about his original cabinet position. Now, I asked you what was in your cabinets. No, I don't mean plates and bowls, forks and knives. Uh, I don't mean your mama's dream kitchen of cabinets. What I mean is a group of advisors, a trusted, a group of trusted, uh, trusted advisors, who are perhaps more of an expert in a particular field than the president is. You know, we can't expect the elected leader, we can't expect one person that we elect to the office of the president to know how to do it all. Certainly Washington had a background in the military. I would trust him as commander in chief, but still he has a secretary of war. He was an economic man. He knew how to run a business and he ran a family plantation and still he had a secretary of treasury. He can't be in all foreign countries at the same time, so he has a secretary of state. He, uh, this was also a very humble acknowledgement by him that, no, I'm not a king. I'm not a monarch. 
I don't have all the answers. I need a group of experts in various fields to help me out. Super notably, these men were not yes men. Yes, sir. We agree. You should do that. Best idea I've ever heard. Absolutely not. And in fact, his group of uh, cabinet members were opposed to each other. I mean, very the, the different political parties. And while we might not have used the word party just yet, we have Thomas Jefferson, who is very much on the strict interpretation of the Constitution side. He is an anti-federalist. We had John Adams, whose uh, vice president was a federalist. We had Alexander Hamilton, his secretary of the Treasury, who was a strong federalist, Federalist believed in the elasticity of the Constitution, loose interpretation. So I'm, I'm already kind of outlining a couple differences between the parties. George Washington brought these men into the same room and said, give me your advice. And I already said that the musical Hamilton kind of flushes that out through two cabinet rap battles. And I'm sure some of y'all can recite those from memory or watch, go home and watch Hamilton over the weekend and just reminisce about it. Hey, it's a great musical. Don't take everything it says as factual uh, because there's always artistic license in Hollywood. But I digress. I digress. That's a phrase I say a lot. A student almost got me a t-shirt saying that phrase this uh, past year. Anyway, Washington's cabinet. Uh, another graphic just showing you a very, a very similar idea that uh, Treasury Department headed by Alexander Hamilton, Department of War. Today, what we would call the Department of Defense. Isn't that interesting? Back then, it was the Department of War, almost like an offensive. We're going to go make war against you. Today, we call it the Department of Defense. We are going to defend our homeland. It's just a little bit of a different perspective there. It's just words, but those words mean things. Department of State, headed by Thomas Jefferson, and the fourth cabinet position was the Attorney General. A lot of times the Attorney General is called the top cop, uh, the uh, head of all